Hello, my name is John Broadwell. I'm an independent embedded systems consultant and the creator of the Serial Wombat open source project. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Serial Wombat's ability to add additional analog to digital converters to your Arduino platform. The Arduino already has the ability to make some analog measurements, but you may want some additional channels. You might also be uh, interested in using a different reference voltage because the Serial Wombat can run anywhere from 2.5 up to 5 volts, which may increase your resolution capability in terms of measurements. In the example today, we're going to be using a Serial Wombat 4B, which is an I2C connected Serial Wombat that has three pins that are analog capable pins 1, 2, and 3. Pin 0 is an input-only digital pin and is not analog capable. For our example, we're going to measure two potentiometers that are connected to pins 3 and 1, and we're also going to use a TMP36 temperature sensor to measure the ambient temperature that is connected to pin 2. We're going to show how the Serial Wombat can run off of either the 5 volt or the 3.3 volt lines and continue to provide accurate measurements despite the fact that its reference voltage has changed. This doesn't matter very much for the potentiometers because they're ratiometric based on their, their input values, but it matters a lot for the temperature monitor, which outputs an absolute voltage. Let's take a look at the circuit real quick. We've got our two I squared C lines. We've got our serial wombat. We've got our bypass capacitor. That's very important. We've got a couple of pull-up resistors. By default, the Arduino uh, enables the weak pull-ups here to make I squared C kind of sort of possible without uh, pull-up resistors. It's not an awesome idea, but it mostly works. But we're not going to do that because we're going to show an example where we're going to be running this breadboard off of the 3.3 line and the Arduino by default pulls up to 5 volts. So by using our own pull-up resistors, we can adjust the pull-up voltage. Let's take a look now at the sketch. For this sketch, we assume you've already loaded the, the Serial Wombat Arduino library. If you haven't, there's a video that shows you how to do that as well. We're going to be using a single Serial Wombat. We're using one that's been pre-programmed with I squared C address 6C. We're going to declare three inputs, three analog inputs. We'll call it left pot, right pot and temperature sensor. And all of those are going to be pins that are on the Serial Wombat 6C that we, that we declared up above. We're going to do an I squared C initialization. Wire begin and Serial Wombat begin on wire with address 6C. We're also going to say digital write low on A5 and A4. Those are the pins that are uh, I squared C are on, that turns off those pull-up resistors because we don't want that 5 volt pull-up. We want to be able to set our own pull-up voltage. If we look, uh, then we call left pot begin and we say you're on serial wombat pin number 3. We call right pot begin, we say you're on serial wombat pin number 1. For the temperature sensor, we want a little bit of averaging on that uh, pin. And so we're going to use a more complicated begin. We're going to say you're on pin 2. Turn on your averaging with 64 samples per uh, measurement. And for the Serial Wombat uh, 4A and 4B, 64, is, 64 and 0 are the only values that are valid here. 0 will always be treated as 0. Any value that's not 0 will be treated as average 64 measurements into each reported value. Uh, there's also the ability to add a first uh, order uh, low pass IIR filter. We'll set that to five half a hertz uh, cutoff frequency. That's outside of the scope of this this particular discussion, but you set them all at all at once. You can also set that to zero, which would turn off the filter. Uh, and then we'll turn on the serial one, and then we will then we will start the serial port so that we can measure some values out. Our loop is fairly simple, but wordy. We're first going to measure our source voltage. The Serial Wombat's capable of measuring its own source voltage, which is really handy if you're running off of something like a battery and you want to see what your battery voltage is. Uh, it's also useful if the Serial Wombat is on a different voltage source than your Arduino. Like for instance, we're going to be running on the 3.3 volt line. That actually lets you do a diagnostic on the 3.3 volt line and see if it's operating properly. Uh, so we're going to take the supply voltage, we're going to print that out. 
we're going to read the counts, which is the A to D counts. The, a, the serial wombat goes from 0 to 65, 535, even though it's a 10-bit converter. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a couple of minutes. We'll dive into what an what a analog to digital converter measurement really means. Uh, then we'll read the voltage. When the serial wombat starts up, it reads its source voltage. And by looking at its source voltage and looking at the A to D conversion, it can give you back the measurement that it makes in millivolts rather than counts. That can be convenient. Turns out it's going to be real convenient for that temperature sensor. So we'll say, what is the voltage of the left pot? Then we'll do the same thing for the right pot, which is essentially all of the same code. Finally, we'll read the counts off of the temperature sensor. The counts are not super useful because the temperature sensor uh, outputs a millivoltage, which is proportional to its temperature. We'll also read the millivoltage. Then we'll take that voltage and run it through the transform that's listed in the TMP36 datasheet in order to get the ambient temperature, and we'll print that out to the serial. We'll end the line. We'll wait 200 milliseconds, then we'll do the whole thing again, and we'll do it repetitively. Now let's talk a little bit about what analog to digital converters actually do, and how resolution is related to the values that you get back, both in terms of absolute voltage measurements and in terms of what individual counts mean. So what does an analog to digital conversion really mean? It really means that we've taken a natural signal that could have any number of infinite possibilities between zero and five volts or 3.3 or whatever our reference voltage is, such as a potentiometer that we saw earlier. As you turn it, it literally could be any number in the entire world. However, when we go to convert it to a digital number, we get what's called quantization, which means that it has to fit into some bucket that is a discrete value. The resolution is expressed in bits, and that's an indication of how many buckets there are. It's always a power of two. Imagine that this green box represents our entire measurement range, and it could be from zero to five volts. It could be from zero to 3.3 volts, or it could be from zero to some other values. Imagine that you were running your system directly off of a LiPo battery that was 0 to 3.7 volts. In any case, we have a ground, which is 0, and we have some full range for our analog to digital converter. A 1-bit converter would tell you whether you were in the top half, which we will represent as a 1, and we will use the color red, or in the bottom half, which we will call zero, and represent by the color blue. So if we have a one-bit converter, what is the limit for what's a zero and what's a limit for what's a one? Well, it's not hard. You just take the range and divide it by the number of bits that we've got. So the threshold for this blue box is two and a half. Any voltage, if our reference voltage is 5, any re voltage above that is going to be a 1. Any reference below that is going to be a 0. However, if our reference voltage is different, then the threshold for what represents a 1 and a 0 is different. Suppose now that we have a 2-bit converter. And what that means is that we can split into four different groups. We take these two bits together and we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. What are the thresholds for these boxes? And the 5 volts, 1.25, 2.5, 3.75. So if we had a voltage of 3 volts, we know that it falls into this box. So a voltage of 3 volts, if 5 volts was our high reference, would give us a value of 2. 
we can do it again and split it into even more parts. So we can see if we have a 3-bit converter, we have eight possible choices. And each time that we do that, we get a tighter and tighter and tighter measurement. And again, it depends on what our reference voltage is, what the breakdown for each of these guys is. So if we look at this, on the first one, we had values of 0 and 1. Now we have zero values from 0 to 8. If we do it again, with a 4-bit digital converter, we have 16 possible buckets that a voltage could fall into. And again, when we get a value back from our A to D converter, if we have a 4-bit converter and it gives us a value of 3, that doesn't mean that the value is 1.25. It means that the value that was measured is somewhere between 0.09375 and 1.25. A lot of people don't a lot of people make a mistake and think that it's an, measure, an absolute measurement. It's not. If we go to 5 bits, our buckets get even smaller. And so in this case, we have 32 different buckets. Which say on a 5 volt, each of these guys is worth about uh, 0.15 volts. On a 3.3, each one is worth about 0.1 volts. So the, as, the buck, as you get more and more bits, the buckets get smaller and smaller, and we can more precisely describe a number. But no matter how many bits we have, we can't describe it exactly. All we can say is that it falls into a bucket between this number and that number. Those buckets get smaller and smaller, but it's still a bucket. The issue with different resolution of converters is the maximum number. For a 1-bit converter, the maximum number is 1. For a 2-bit, it's, it's 3. For a 4-bit, I'm sorry, for a 3-bit, it's 7. For a 4-bit, it's 15. For a 5-bit, it's 31. So depending on the resolution that you have, the maximum range varies. In the case of Arduino, most numbers are reported as 10-bit numbers, which means that they range from 0 to 1,023. However, some Arduino platforms have 12-bit converters, which means that the number you get back ranges from 0 to 4,095. This is unfortunate because it means that if you code to those numbers, that your code is not portable from one platform to another. The Arduino people did a lot of things right. One of the things I think they made a mistake in is not scaling numbers so that they have a uniform range. How do you do that? Well, what I would have done had I designed the platform is made all of the numbers range from 0 to 65535. That's the full range of a 16-bit number. How does that work? Well, if you have a 1-bit converter, it would have two buckets, one that ranged from 0 to 32, uh, 767, and one that ranged up to 65535. And so if you had a, num a number anywhere in this range, a 1-bit converter would give you this number. If you had a voltage anywhere in this range, it would give you that one. Similarly, if you had a 2-bit converter, uh, we'll, just do the, we'll just do the bottom half down here. You would have 16384. And if you had a, uh, a three bit converter, your ranges would get smaller and, and so on and so forth until eventually you got all the way out. The advantage to that is to doing it, these are called left justified numbers, 
where the numbers, where the bits change in the most significant digits, not the least significant digits. The advantage to that is that regardless of your resolution, you can take numbers and continue to use them. If I use left justified numbers, if I have five volts, 2.5 volts is 32768, regardless of if I have a one, two, three, four, five, 10, 12, or even 16 bit A to D converter. They're all compatible. So the Serial Wombat returns counts that range from zero to 65535. And it's only a 10 bit converter. And what that means is that each bucket of 60 is worth 64 counts. So you'll get a, you'll either get zero or 64 or 128. You'll never see the Serial Wombat return 37 because that's within one of its buckets that ranges from zero to 64. At some point in the future, I may well use, use a new pick to generate a new serial wombat that has a 12-bit converter, in which case we will have 4,096 possible buckets. And what that means is, is that instead of moving in 64 count increments, we'll be able to discern smaller mounts down to 16 count increments. But the numbers and the sketches would still be compatible because we're using that full range of 0 to 65,535. Essentially, we're making everything a fraction that has the same denominator. If you use right justified numbers, which is what Arduino does, then your, your fraction denominator varies depending on the the resolution of the A to D converter, whether it's 1024 or 4096 for a 10 or 12 bit converter respectively. Here we can see our circuit executing our sketch. On the left hand side we have the voltage that's coming out of this potentiometer. On the right hand side we have the voltage that is connected up to the breadboard power source itself. You can see on the screen from our printout that we are reading our source voltage. The Wombat's reading it as 4.481 uh, volts. The Fluke is reading it at 4.3. The Serial Wombat's voltage reference is accurate within a couple of percent. The Fluke hasn't been calibrated for a while, so there's a little bit of difference between the two. Uh, you can see as I turn this from left, it goes all the way up to the source voltage. If I turn it to the right, it goes all the way down to zero. You'll note that if I turn it to half of the source voltage, which is right around 2.2 volts, we, uh, we get a value that's very close to the center of that 65,535 range. A perfect value would be 32,768, and we're within a few uh, 64 count ticks of that. Uh, you can see that we also can measure the absolute voltage on that one, and we're seeing about 2.27 volts. Over here, we're seeing 2.206. So, you know, for a, a microcontroller that in quantity costs less than a dollar compared to the $100 Fluke, it's doing a pretty good, uh, pretty good job measuring that voltage. Uh, we can see that it is measuring its own source voltage. That's how it calculates the absolute value because as we saw before uh, the A to D converter doesn't return an absolute value it merely returns the ratio of the voltage that's measured to the difference between the ground and the reference voltage. Uh, when the Serial Wombat first starts up it measures its reference voltage. You can also tell it periodically re-reference uh, Remeasure your reference voltage, and it uses that in a calculation to come up with the millivolt values that you see there. Similarly, we can turn right here, left here, and we see that that particular uh, pot is doing the same thing. Let's see if we can dial that one in right at about 16,000, which is. Uh, one quarter of a turn or one quarter of the range. So keep a note that the left hand pot is about is it about 32768 the right hand pot is at about 16,000. That's going to be relevant in a minute when we switch uh, power supplies. And up here you can see that we have the uh, 
the temperature uh, item that's dumping out uh, 730 millivolts, which is about 22.6 uh, degrees C after you do the transform on it, which is perfectly reasonable for uh, room temperature. Let's disconnect this from the 5 volts on the Arduino and connect up our serial wombat to the 3.3 volt supply. We'll do a reset so that we go through initialization because the wombat lost its configuration when we took the power away. And we can see we're dumping it out again. So there's a couple of things you should see now. We notice on the left hand side that we're getting a source voltage of 3300 millivolts which is very comparable to what the fluke is giving us. And we note that the left pot and the right pot are still reading about the same counts. Because again, a potentiometer is a ratiometric uh, device, and so is the analog to digital converter. So even though the source voltage changed, it changed for the pot and also for the serial wombat. So the counts come out about the same, even though our uh, measured voltage dropped from 2.2 volts down to about 1.6 volts on the left hand pot. You'll note that the temperature sensor on the other hand, it generates an absolute vo voltage that is proportional to the uh, temperature of the surroundings regardless of the source voltage. So it continues to put out 700 and some millivolts. And just to make sure that thing is working, just for fun, let's spray it with some cold spray. And we'll watch what happens. Yep, it got real cold real fast, minus 20 degrees. And now it's warming back up slowly but surely to room temperature. So I hope you enjoyed this example of how to use the Serial Wombat's analog to digital converter and maybe learned a little bit about what uh, analog to digital resolution is and what the measurement that comes back really means. Uh, if you successfully used the Serial Wombat's analog input functions, uh, leave me a comment in the notes below, or if you've got questions or have suggestions for improvements on the firmware, you think you found a bug, leave me a comment there as well. Uh, this has been John Broadwell, the creator of the Serial Wombat. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features to the Serial Wombat. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Questions sent to John at Broadwell Consulting about the Serial Wombat will not be returned.